Hi everyone and welcome back to Ben Built. In this week's exciting project, I'm going to be showing you how you can make your very own coil gun from parts that you might be able to find lying around your shop. The finalized product will look something like this and we'll be able to shoot a projectile something like that. All right, everyone, let's get started. For this project, you're going to need a solid base where you can glue all of the pieces to. I'm using some thin, medium density fiber board right here, a large, heavy duty switch, some sort of coil. This coil right here came out of a relay. It's very fine windings, but if I end up destroying the windings, I'll either wind my own coil or find one with thicker windings. In addition, you're going to need a large capacitor. This capacitor is a Cornell Dublier 3300 microfarad capacitor rated at 40 volts DC. I would suggest finding something of a similar rating, but really any capacitor at all will work. I'm going to be charging it up to a low voltage, about 38 volts, but you can do a higher voltage and even a higher storage if you can find the capacitors. You're going to need a lot of capacitors. So that's pretty much it. The whole idea behind this project is we charge up the capacitors to 38 volts and then using the switch, discharge the entire storage bank into this coil. If we put a piece of ferrous metal, like this nail right here, a little ways into the coil, when the coil is energized, it will rapidly accelerate the iron nail. Once the nail gets to about the halfway point, the charge on the capacitors will have died off, and the nail will continue flying forward with, with its initial momentum. Here's a quick demonstration of the kind of power that these capacitors can hold. I'm going to charge up just one of these capacitors right here positive to positive and negative to negative. Don't know if you could see it. If you blinked, you missed it, but it was a pretty good spark. And we're going to be wiring all of these capacitors right here in parallel, which means that the capacitance adds up and the voltage of the bank stays the same. So we're gonna be charging the bank to about 38 volts. All right, so I'm gonna be using four groups of two capacitors. Um, in order to get the desired capacitance that I want. So if you look on these capacitors, there is a line of positives going all the way down one side, denoting that this is the positive lead. And over here, there's another line of positives going down another side. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be hot gluing the positive to the positive, and then I'm going to be bridging the wires right here, the leads together with some solder so that they form a connection in the middle, and I will have a positive rail running down the middle of the capacitors and the negative on the outside. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the process with the rest of the capacitors and then we'll move on to assembling the pack. I've taken all of the capacitors and hot glued them into their pack. Then I bent over the positive leads of all of the capacitors together and I'm going to be joining them together with these copper strips right here, extracted from a transformer. I'm gonna solder the positive to the copper strips, and then another copper strip right here, and then I'll join them together on the top of the pack. Now that the copper strips have been successfully soldered in place and tested to ensure continuity with a multimeter, I went ahead and I folded um, around up here on the top, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold in place um, one of these copper wires. There it is clamped in place. Now I'm going to add some solder. The positive lead has been successfully soldered on. Now it's on to the negative lead. I'm going to snake the negative lead all the way through the bank and connect all of the negative terminals to it. This is what the negative lead looks like stripped before it's been soldered in place. This right here is what the final capacitor bank looks like. It's time for the first power up. So I'm going to hook the capacitor bank positive to the positive of the power supply and negative to the negative of the power supply and I'm going to start the voltage very low and turn it on. We'll stop at 38 volts. There it is, fully charged. Alright, time to discharge it and see what kind of spark we get. Just for good measure I'm gonna sharpen the projectile on the sander. Now that we've adequately sharpened the projectile to the point where it's a very sharp tip, 
we are ready for final assembly. All right, so the next step for me is I went ahead and added some more of this thick gauge wire to a switch right here. I'm going to attempt to use a switch to turn on and off uh, the capacitor bank. Basically push the switch down to discharge the capacitor bank into the load. But I'm not sure if the switch can handle enough amps. I mean, if we look on it, it says right here ICN, which is 500 amps but ITH is rated at 14.2 amps. So, and there's 15A right here, so there's 15 amps, 14.2, or 500 amps. So we'll see which one it is when we try it out. For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and solder this remaining lead to this tab right here, and then screw it into the terminal strip. All right, so this is the setup. We've got the capacitor bank back here. The capacitor bank is connected to a terminal strip, just like so, and the positive lead coming off the capacitor bank goes into this terminal. It gets bridged in the back right here to the second terminal. From the second terminal, it enters the bottom terminal of the switch. It goes through the switch into the top terminal and into the third terminal on the terminal strip. And then from that terminal out to the discharge wire. And then there's going to be just a direct hard wire connection from the negative line right here directly to whatever load we're going to use. Depending on how much current the switch is rated for, it's either going to pass all of it perfectly into the load or it's going to explode. And because of that danger, I'm not going to be standing near here when this thing goes off. If any of this right here is too confusing for you or you can't follow along in the video, as always, a schematic will be in the description available for you to read. All right, so here we go for the first test. I'm going to load the projectile into the coil by tapping it back like so. Then I'm going to use a small wire to ram it all the way back, maybe something a little bit longer, like so. All right, then I'm gonna charge the capacitor bank, powering up, increasing the voltage all the way up to 38. For safety purposes, I'm going to set a piece of two by four right here Alright, well nothing happened. So if we set up our multimeter and use the probes right here to measure the resistance of the coil, it will become apparent to us why the launcher didn't work the first time. As you can see right here, the coil has a resistance of approximately 107.6 ohms. So we know that through Ohm's law, I, which is current, is equal to E over R. So current is equal to voltage over resistance. So if we know that the voltage of the capacitor bank is 38 volts and the resistance is about 110 ohms, um, we can figure out that that coil can only draw a maximum of 300 milliamps of current. Now, 300 milliamps of current isn't really enough to do anything but actuate a relay. So I'm gonna go ahead and wind a new coil with some thicker enameled wire and um, then we can see much better um, how the system performs. All right, so I went ahead and made a, yet another new coil, tested the resistance here, and we've got 0.4 ohms of resistance on this coil right here, which should mean that it would discharge even faster. So here we go, firing this last coil in three, two, one. Hey, it worked. Here's an up close shot of the coil gun firing again. In three, two, one. There it is. It shoots out with some pretty decent force, um, enough to make some marks on the 2x4s like that. It's not enough to actually embed it in there, but for a quick and easy little project that you can build at home, it's not bad at all. Thanks so much for watching Ben Builds. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment if you have any questions, concerns, feedback, anything like that. Thanks again, everyone. Bye. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, feel free to click the subscribe button and check out some of my other videos.